welcome back everyone to another review by Fat Ninja Studios. I'm your host, Jackie Kay, and today we are undertaking the secret mission of No Time to Die, the final film in the Daniel Craig era of Bond movies. Before we breach security clearance, please give this video a like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to snipe that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. Spoiler warning ahead! The film begins with a flashback of Madeline Swan witnessing the murder of her mother. Lucifer Safine was attempting to murder her father, Mr. White, and upon discovering her dead mother, Madeline manages to shoot Savine before fleeing onto an icy lake. She falls through the ice, and Savine, having survived the gunshot, rescues her and takes her. We cut to the present. James Bond and an adult Madeline are in Matera, after having captured Ernest Stavros Blofield. When James goes to visit Vesper Lynn's tomb, he is ambushed by a bunch of Spectre assassins and manages to escape with Madeline. However, he believes that she betrayed him and sends her on her way. Another time jump, this time five years later, MI6 scientist Valdo Arbushev is kidnapped. He was in charge of developing a bioweapon using nanomachines called Project Heracles, under the instruction of M. This bioweapon acts like a virus and can be transferred upon touch, encoded to specific DNA signatures so that it can target certain individuals lethally while leaving all others completely safe. Bond, in the meantime, has retired to Jamaica. One night he is contacted by CIA operative Felix Later and a colleague of his, Logan Ash, and they ask him to temporarily come out of retirement to help retrieve Dr. Obrashev. Bond declines and picks up a young woman, who turns out to be his double O replacement, Nomi. She tells him about Project Heracles, so naturally, Bond agrees to save the world. Bond hops on a plane and heads to Cuba, where he meets another friend of Lighter's, CIA Agent Paloma. She gears him up and they head undercover to a swanky birthday party held by Spectre in honor of Blowfield. Even though Blowfield is still detained in Belmarsh, he is able to attend a gathering using a bionic eye, and alerts the members of Spectre to Bond's presence, ordering them to use the nanobot mist. This, however, backfires as it targets all the members of Spectre instead, bodies dropping all around Bond. Bond manages to rescue Obershev and learns that Safine had him reprogram the virus to kill Spectre members. When Bond reunites with Felix and Logan, Ash kills Felix and escapes with the scientist, revealing he was indeed a double agent. Bond gets help from Moneypenny and Q to arrange a meeting between himself and Blofeld to find out where Obershev has been taken. Meanwhile, it turns out that Madeline has been Blofeld's psychiatrist for the past few years. She is surprised by a visit from Safine, who forces her to wear the nano mist to kill Blofeld, or her daughter is going to be executed. At the prison, Bond briefly comes into contact with Madeline and is infected with the nanovirus, unbeknownst to both of them. And Madeline can't go through with this whole thing, so she just leaves. Bond goes in, begins to interrogate Blofeld, who just oozes delight when he attacks Bond's ego, and Bond tries to strangle him. He is stopped by an agent and told to cool off, but when they turn back, literally 30 seconds later, they see Blofeld is dead. Q does a scan of Bond and finds out he is indeed infected with the nanomachines, and once you've got him, you can't get rid of him. Bond tracks Madeline to her childhood home and meets Matilda, her five-year-old daughter. She tells him of her past, how Safine murdered her mother, and then rescued her from drowning in the ice. Killing all the members of Spectre basically avenged Safine's family. He is not done yet, though, and needs to get rid of Bond and Madeline. Having been lured into a false sense of security, Bond and Madeline spend the night together, but are awoken when Bond gets an alert from MI6. Nomi, who has been tracking Logan Ash, gives MI6 the GPS coordinates, and it seems that they are on the way to... Madeline's house! Bond packs the girls into his car and races off. A big car pursuit ensues, which leads to a final battle in the misty forest, 
where Bond takes on a convoy while he's on foot, even managing to flip a car by leading them to drive into a log. It's actually pretty spectacular to see, but it also feels like it was heading into more John Wick territory. With Logan Ash out of the picture, Bond is still too late as Sabine manages to fly off with Madeline and Matilda. Luckily, Nomi shows up just in time to help Bond start chasing them down. Q sets up Bond and Nomi with a few gadgets and they are on their way to infiltrate Sabine's tropical island. This is where the film feels classic Bond, an evil scientist with a lair built over an entire island and tons of other evil world dictators on their way to buy this crazy new world ending weapon while riding on luxury liners. Bond and Nomi manage to break in and get to Overshout fairly easily, maybe too easily, as Safine contacts them over the intercom. Bond is called up to a fancy big chamber where he encounters Sabine holding young Matilda hostage. Bond puts down his gun, gets on his knees, but while Sabine delivers his epic classic bad guy monologue, Bond pulls a pistol from his pants and starts blasting fools left and right. Of course, Sabine escapes through a church door behind his desk. Meanwhile, Nomi needs to escape and Obersha makes the biggest mistake of his life as he threatens to kill her entire race, and she swiftly drop kicks his ass into a vat of nanobot acid. Madeline manages to escape her captor and meets up with Bond, who comes across Matilda as Sabine had let her go to make his own escape. Bond then finds Nomi and has her take Madeline and Matilda off of the island. He, of course, needs to stay behind to make sure the blast doors are open so a missile strike can take out the whole island laboratory. He kisses Madeline goodbye for now and heads inside. However, after opening the doors, they start closing again, and Bond is shot by Safine. They fight, and Safine breaks a vial over Bond and himself. He then tells Bond, It has got Madeline and Matilda's DNA and it's been targeted, so neither of them can get anywhere near you ever again. Bond shoots him a few times, and goes to open the blast doors again. This time, he contacts Q to patch him through to Madeline, and they have a heartfelt goodbye. Honestly, this part literally made me cry, and I wasn't expecting that in a Bond movie. She tells him that Matilda is his daughter, and he is happy to hear that. He says he loves her, and then, boom, the missiles hit, blowing up everything in sight, including James Bond. The movie ends with MI6 holding a funeral service for him and Madeline driving off in Materna with Matilda, telling her about James' life. All in all, I gotta say wow, what a send off! A milestone at that for being the first movie in the entire franchise to actually kill James Bond. There have been fake out deaths and you never know if they won't somehow undo it in a future sequel, maybe have Bond resurface as a new actor, citing that he got some sort of plastic surgery, but I think this is pretty much the finale, at least to Daniel Craig era pentalogy. I must admit, when I first saw him take over as Bond, I wasn't so impressed. I was used to the casual, suave, calm but deadly James Bond, especially coming off of the Pierce Brosnan films but he has grown on me. Skyfall cementing him perfectly in the role, and now this film gives him an almost perfect send-off. If you're a fan of Bond, or just big action spy thrillers in general, this is a film to see. It felt very much like the original Connery classics, the story feeling right at home with the original Ian Fleming writings. I give this film a 9 out of 10. Great cinematography, very cool easter eggs for the fans, an awesome soundtrack, and expert special effects and stunts. Don't let this one slip by you. I want to thank you all for checking out our video. Please give it a like, share, and subscribe to our channel. You can reach out to us on Twitter at StudiosFat or chat with us on Discord, linked below in the description. We also have a Patreon, so please check that out as well, also linked below. I've been your host, Jackie K. And before I go, courage is a powerful thing. To stand up for what's right, to save someone's life, 
or even to find the strength to be your best self on any given day. But be wary, there's a big difference between having courage and being foolhardy. There is no shame in asking for backup and having a friend in times of need. Don't put yourself into dangerous situations just to prove something. You are already important, and you are not alone. Thanks again, and as always, take care.